Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for the opportunity to speak for you today and uh, that you have invited me here. Uh, I shall too and try and do it in my best school English, which I also have picked up during the last years, uh, since we be became more and more an international dairy company. And the subject today is dealing with the risks in all our foods, and uh, we have heard to, I've been around and heard two interesting presentations before, and uh, of course uh, there are risks in, in a co-op company, and uh, it's about milk. And, and we have a board meeting tomorrow in, in all our foods, and uh, we shall uh, deal some risk about uh, supervision in the finance sector. We have a kickoff process for consolidation po uh, policy, a risk in compliance inclusive fraud. We have uh, auditor's records. We have insurance on the agenda. And a decision concerning treasury policy. So uh, it's all the time there's a lot of risk to, to be handled in all companies, small or big, but you have to handle risk. And, and that's very important for us to deal with that. Uh, we have really long cooperative routes. For different reasons, farmers, they chose to cooperate with each other. Uh, this can be a picture from Sweden, where farmers started to cooperate to reach the profitable market in the big cities, for example, Stockholm or Gothenburg. It can be a picture from Denmark, where there was a lot of dairy production, and they were making a lot of butter and cheese and like that to reach a profitable market or a market outside Denmark. But, but uh, it is, the important thing is to cooperate about milk is, is yes, rather very, very natural because it's a fresh product. You have to handle and take care of it every day. You can't store the fresh milk because you have to do something about it, and it costs a lot of money to. to uh, there's a lot of money to be invested to to uh, process the milk. So uh, we've been around a long time. I haven't been around since 1880, but nearly. Uh, Ala Foods is uh, a merger between the Danish. Uh, yeah, it says Mary Selskabe Damak, but it was for Dansk. Between Ala and, and the Swedish. And we have uh, roots uh, from the 1970s where we, there was a decision in the boards that they would take a market leader role in, in, in their countries. And uh, we were, as I say, nearly finished in, in the late 90s. There was not much more to do in Denmark or in Sweden, competition, competition authorities, and whatever it take was, was that we had to do something uh, to, to grow. And uh, there was a meeting in 98, 99, between the Danes and the Swedes. Sweden was a domestic company, nearly non-export at all. But, but our customers, the retailers, they, they were moving, uh, and there was a lot of competition coming into Sweden. Uh, the Danes uh, had a long tradition for, for exporting product or, or food. So it's some sort of natural to start to, to join the enemy, because the Danes, they were the enemy. So we did that in 2000, and, and uh, starting to, the work together, it's nearly the same language in Sweden and Denmark, so there was no problem. And, and at that time, uh, the market was more stable. You know, the new world since 2007 8 the volatile <coughs> market it wasn't there. That was the EU policy, that was uh, they stored butter and, and powder and everything in EU, but they don't do it anymore. Uh, and then after that, uh, we started to think of our own strategy. We have a <coughs> harmonization strategy in the beginning. But in 2008, before the economic crisis, we set a new strategy that was about growth, to, to reach new markets, and it was about acquisitions. But uh, here's some example, and it was the late two years. There is one acquisition, but the rest is mergers. 
the mergers with the Swedish small company Milko and uh, German and uh, uh, also the UK company Milklink. The merger with, with uh, Hansa Mills in the northern part of, of Germany was, was also actually a, a really big step to, to go outside uh, Scandinavia and Sweden and Denmark to uh, have a new board member in the room which name was Uwe Krause and when he was in school and studied he studied Russia because he was from Mecklenburg Vorpommern. So, so when we did that there was interpreters coming into the room and, and we started to have board member at a board meeting in all the language you can speak in those countries. Uh, today we uh, have our board meetings uh, in English language, but you are allowed to, to speak your own language if you want to. So, so we have had a, actually a very good growth at, in the last uh, year, since in 2011. Uh, this year we, we approximately reach 10 billion euros in turnover. We are located all over the world, not all over the world, but, but in many parts of the world. I will come back to that a little bit. And we have a lot of employees around the world, about 18,000, and hopefully they, they share our mission in the company, which is settled down by, by the board a couple of years ago. We have talked a lot about the vision and the mission to be in the market, to create value for the consumers and like that. But, but this mission we settled last year, and uh, it is important for us, and it is important for, for work, uh, people working by us, for ourselves, to, to tell who we is and what we want to achieve. Uh, and to achieve a high value for our milk while creating opportunities for their growth. And uh, you know about growth, that is many things that can be double up from 200 to 400 cows, that can be get enough money to buy a new tractor, that can also be have a good profit on the farm so you can buy something to, to your wife. Growth is many things, but, but you know what it is on, on farm level. Uh, this mission is, is, is very important for us at the moment, and especially when we are uh, around in, in, in six different member countries. We have members in, in Sweden, Denmark, uh, of course, in Germany, UK, Belgium, and Luxembourg. Last year, we, we also, when we, we changed the mission, we, we, we uh, what you say, we didn't change strategy, but, but we tried to find something that is easy to understand for this company. And, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, we, we started to concentrate on milk. All our foods is working with milk, milk, and milk. And uh, with that mission, and to start to, to have a competitive milk price to our farmers, and you know as well as I do what, what is a competitive milk price in a co-op company. At the moment, we have about 39, 40 euro cent. Are you satisfied? Yes, maybe for an evening or uh, one day, but the day after you want half a euro cent more. And that's how the co-op company shall work and will work. Well, we are not really satisfied because we want a little bit more all the time. And we put a pressure on the board of representatives or the, or the board of directors or, or the management to, to always have the most competitive milk price. And, and we compare each other, uh, compare with other companies around us, and, and we have a good example in the Netherlands at the moment with Free, Royal Friesland Campina, which is really good performing at the moment. And what we want to achieve with, with a competitive milk price, we want leading, leading position, and I saw from Yuli before, buy out competitors. We don't want to meet the milk on the market because we want to be in the position of the milk to have leading positions, to, to meet our customers with a full range of products that, that shows that this, our company is to prefer uh, instead of uh, uh, other companies. And then, and then the last one, growth leads to more milk. And I heard our CEO Peter Tuber said a couple of meetings ago, it's about 
have a lot of milk, heating it up. And when the milk is warm, find some new cold milk, fill it in, heat it up again, and when you're ready with that, find some new milk, take some positions, and go for that. So a little bit at the moment, we, we, are, we are really telling as a co-op company, we want more milk. We want more milk. And, and we are really sure that we also can handle it in a profitable way. <coughs> we are a core market company. We have six core markets. Uh, we are leading position in a couple of them, and, and we have a second place in a couple of them. Sweden, Finland, Denmark, Germany, UK, and also a little bit of Netherlands. Uh, so, so we are a core market company. And, and of course, 70% uh, of our turnover is in the core market. And our profit, that, that's most of the money comes from the core markets, of course. But we also have, have uh, other milk. We, we can call it trading milk or milk for industrial need or, or uh, whatever it takes. And we shall put it somewhere. So we have the ambition to grow outside Europe. And we know, and you know, and I've heard before also, when you want to grow with more milk, where, where shall you put it? Where, where shall you sell it profitable? And we are in a mature market in Europe, so there is not much more milk to be sold in Europe. Maybe we want some more money out of the milk, more profit out of the milk in Europe. But if there come more milk in Europe to, to start to compete with the New Zealand guys or with, with the United States, you have to put it somewhere. And we, we are aiming for Russia, big cheese market. We're aiming for China and participating in China with a joint venture company in Mengyu. You know a lot about that. We have been in Saudi Arabia, Middle East since 70s, 80s. The Danes have been there. We come afterwards. And at the moment, we, we, uh, when, when you look around, where, where is the coming market? It's, it was the North Africa, but now it's Africa. And for example, China, they say they have uh, a middle class in China, which is bigger than all the Europe people, right? and they have money to buy for. So that, that's very important for us to, to, to uh, have somewhere to, uh, to uh, sell that milk or, or that production that will come up later on. We, we uh, see and we have seen that we made a strategy that will come one or two billion liters milk more in our, by our members. Uh, and we are ready to take care of that milk. We are ready to take care of that milk. The, the countries that will, will incre uh, increase the milk production it is, first of all, Denmark and uh, Germany. Sweden, not so much, and not UK either. And then we also measure our uh, efficiency from the farm to the customer all the way on all our plants around all our foods, we have to, to uh, be more and more efficient to handle the milk and the products in a more efficient way. But the base for internal control is, is changing all the time. Uh, volatile world and globalization, it, it comes rather quick. Uh, I don't know many CEOs at the moment that want to foresee and tell what the market looks like in six months from now, or the milk price six months from now, as I know, maximum three months. So, so the, not so quick. Debt crisis, increasing external fraud, ET crime, that's one of our seven essentials in Ola to, to achieve a very uh, fine uh, IT, IT service and like that in company, but I don't know if we ever will be ready with ET in, in the company. Tax uh, transparency and governance, I'll come back to that. Uh, social responsibility, uh, company social responsibility, that is important for us and that is important for a co-op company because we, we have a code of conduct and, and every year we, we uh, present uh, an annual report of social responsibility. 
how we behave, what we do in the company, and, and we do a lot of good things. But, but in, in a big company with 18,000 employees and, and on a lot of markets, things are happening and, and we have to deal with them. Increased regular, regular territorial requirement and political risks. About political risks, you never know when, where, when or where it happens the next time. So, so that's the challenges for us, growth and acquisition strategy. Come back to a little bit, global activities, complex IT landscape and shared service center of all countries and high level of, of legal entities. And so to run a co-op company with uh, 12,000 members, farmers, they know what they want, they are not really satisfied all the time, they put a pressure on us and they come from different cultures and, and background, uh, that's a challenge for us. This is our cooperative democracy which we started up or uh, de developed in 2013 uh, before the board of representatives in, in May we were 24 board members that's nearly a whole board of representatives, but uh, because of the mergers and everything, they came in. So we reduced. We are 15 farmers at the moment. Uh, there are six Danes, four Swedes, two UK members, and three Germans. And we have a board of representatives, a large one. We meet three times a year. We have established national councils to take care of, of uh, for example, Arla Farm uh, quality system to take care of national issues, to, to meet uh, the farmers' union and everything like that. So that has started up. Uh, there are six board of direct representatives members and two from the board. So they are connected to the board. But this is a challenge for us, but, but function rather good, but, but it, it takes that you have respect for each other and listen to each other. And, that will take some <laughs> efforts to do that. This about the consolidation policy to build an economic in a company and uh, to have enough resources to, to meet, meet the future. Um, if I'm a little bit, I don't know what, what I should say, but, but to be a little bit uh, honest with you, you can do your mathematic lesson backwards. How much money do you need for the next coming period to do a lot of acquisitions or mergers or to invest in the company? What do you need for profit in the company to be reliable on the market where you shall have money out of the banks and like that? What gearing do you need in the company? In some sort of construction you can do. And uh, when we did it in 2010, we said we need four, uh, what will it be? It will be uh, six, seven hundred million euros we need for the coming period to uh, have the freedom to do what we like. How, would you, how can we get that money? We need a profit. Three percent of the revenue. We have ten billions, ten billions the euro. Three percent of the revenue. That's, that's good for the banks, that's good for us. Uh, maybe we increase the solvency if we don't do too much mer uh, mergers. And how do we get 600 million euros out of that? We took this mathematical thing. We took 4.5% of the, of the performance price. If, if we, for example, have 40 euros at it, in a performance price. A performance price is what you can perform, including curtain payment, including consolidation and everything. And then, then out of that, we, we get out the money and we multiply it with four and we give the 600 euros. It, it's not so difficult to understand as you, I can see in your faces just now. And then there were some people who wanted some individual and some on the collective capital. So we split it. One third to individual and two thirds to the collective. And the rest was paid out as a certain payment. And that's about one and a half euro cent. One and a half euro cent as the third and payment. And that, that was, this is a handshake with the Board of Representatives. It's a handshake to, to say, 
We own the company. We want to profit. We want to consolidation in the company. Uh, and there is a 13th payment. And this handshake uh, normally works really good for us to, to, to tell that we own the company, we shall finance the company. We shall be able to, to go to the bank uh, and write some capital, capital to do what we like. And, and it has functioned really good by us. We also uh, shall put some figures how, how the CapEx investment uh, shall be in Arla. Uh, normally for, for maintenance, uh, some new products and like that, it's about the same. 3% of the turnover. Easy to remember for, for the members in the company. The, the, the environment, that was not me, was it? Do I try? Do I dare? Pick. Yeah. Uh, the control environment is developing. All the time you have to, to work with control, you, uh, to be secure that you are doing the right thing, that, that uh, uh, you can follow the development in, in the culture, in the society, in everything. And, and I think uh, that's the most challenging thing at, uh, in the moment. Risk management overview. We, we are working with the board. Uh, what we are doing in the board, internal controls, uh, financial controlling, strategic work, operational work, etc. Uh, so, so we have a lot of in initiatives going on to, to improve. So, so we have control in the company. And it's, it's not easy to be a, I'm an ordinary farmer, running a farm and then I'm sharing this company. All my colleagues are also farmers. So we don't have any external uh, board members yet. There is an opportunity to have it, that's no problem, but we don't have it yet. When we have a discussion with each other, we say uh, the most important thing for us is to have the right CFO and the right management group. That's the most important thing where we can rely on, that we can work with, so, so we can follow our uh, strategy in the company. So uh, we have procedures and structures for the board of directors. We have CSR, corporate social responsibility. We have a code of conduct. We had in 2005, we have a really, really tough thing going on in the Middle East. I don't know if you know about the, the drawings from uh, Mohammed from a Danish newspaper. Uh, the market went from 100 to zero in six weeks. Nothing, 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 and start to come back again. And the year before, we established this about the code of conduct. So we uh, had, a, had a document that said, we shall have respect for the market, for the people, for the culture. We meet where we are, which, which means that they shall have respect for for the people in the Middle East, as you shall have respect for the people in the northern part of Sweden. And I don't know if, which is most easy, because it's special people in the northern part of Sweden. So, so that was good for us. And we start with this document. And then we have uh, had a lot of good things coming out of that later on, because we had a melamine scandal in, in, uh, in powder in China. And we also have the code of conduct. So we think we have something that is very important for us, the co-op company, and also for the board. We have uh, quality and food safety. That's Arla Garden in Swedish, but uh, it's Arla Farm. And, and we shall have the same quality of milk wherever we are. We should try to achieve the same uh, quality of milk so we can use the Arla Farm milk in all our products. And it's not easy. <coughs> for the Swedes to drink Danish milk, or for the Danes to drink UK milk. But maybe it's easy for all the Europe people to drink Irish milk, but I know. No, no, no. Uh, I, we are colleagues, and I, I say because I, when I visited UK a couple of a month ago, I said, how is it able for us to, to, to go together with 
those are our guys with our pure milk from these grassing cows outside here, in, I think it was in Northampton. And all farmers, they are very proud of their work and they do whatever it takes to have a good animal welfare and have to good work every day. So I think we, we have to realize that, that farmers running dairy business or dairy uh, farms, they are working as, uh, as good as they can. Risk management and internal control I mentioned, and we also have a whistleblower solution that you <laughs> can tell if there is anything wrong in the company. This is a standard procedure for, for a board meeting. Uh, I end up with that. We had the minutes from last meeting. We have supervision, control, finance, and market report. We have one part about strategy and information from the management and some decision if it's take that. And there is an embedding about uh, member issues. Uh, a long time ago it took half a meeting or a couple of hours. Now it takes 10 minutes, 15 minutes, because the work has been done in the national councils before. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, roles of procedures and, uh, and all things like that. We think we have uh, achieve a good way to work together and, and it, is, it takes some respect and understanding when, when there are uh, different nationalities in, in the room but, but uh, the moment we're running really good in Arla, we had a good milk price uh, today but we want more tomorrow and we need more milk for the milk wheel. Thank you very much.